Hi, I'm Dr. Paul Paddle, ear, nose and throat specialist at the Melbourne ENT Group. This video is about how to do a rapid antigen test and some frequently asked questions. Please watch this video because there are some common mistakes that are made. At the time of making this video, it seems everyone in Australia and indeed around the world is talking about rapid antigen tests. These are also known as RATs. I'll refer to them as this for the rest of the video. Different tests will vary, but the general lessons in this video will still apply. So, we will start with what most people are interested in, how to perform a RAT. There are some things you need to do before the test. If you are storing the test, or even leaving it in the car for example, make sure you leave it between 2 and 30 degrees Celsius at all times to ensure it doesn't go off. A useful idea is to simply keep it in the fridge, since most fridges are around 4 degrees, and remove it prior to testing. However, make sure you allow it to come to room temperature, between 15 to 13 degrees, before testing. Also, don't freeze your rats. Tests can be stored in that temperature range for 12 months from the date of manufacture. When you're ready to test, have a timer ready, such as on your phone or watch, wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds or use hand sanitizer, and make sure you have all the test components laid out in front of you and ready to use. Nasal swabs collect nasal secretions and techniques may vary slightly depending on the brand. Take the swab out of its packaging, taking care not to touch the swab tip. Blow your nose into a tissue to clear any debris and remove excess mucus. Gently insert the swab into the right nostril, one to two centimeters. Rub against the nasal walls in a circular motion, completing at least five turns for a total of 15 seconds. Remove the swab and repeat the process with the left nostril. Some tips. Understandably, people don't realize that the nasal cavity goes mostly backwards and not up. So don't go up with the swab. That's painful and not the best way to get a sample. Also, don't go around the edge of the nose either. That's not going to get you far enough in. You need to go backwards about one to two centimeters. This way, it shouldn't be painful. It may be uncomfortable, but it shouldn't hurt. As soon as you've completed this, place the swab into the extraction medium tube. Break off the swab handle at the break point and discard the break off handle. Seal the tube with the supplied lid. Squeeze the walls of the tube against the sponge tip of the nasal swab around 15 times to wring out all the collected secretions. You will now need to add your sample to the test device that usually looks a little like a rectangular cassette. At one end, it will have a circular well, often labelled S for sample. Unscrew your sample tube and carefully add three to five full drops of your solution to the sample well. As soon as you've done this, start the timer as timing is important. For most rat brands, you want to leave it 15 to 20 minutes after you place the solution in with the testing plate before reading the result. But do confirm the timing with the instructions of the test you're using. Results generally should not be read before 15 minutes or after 20 to 30 minutes. Remember, always check those time limits on the instructions that come with your kit. For the oral swab, it's important not to consume food or drink, brush teeth, smoke, chew gum or use mouthwash for 30 minutes prior to collecting your sample. Oral swabs collect saliva instead of nasal secretion and again the techniques vary according to brand. Take the swab out of its packaging taking care not to touch the swab tip. Right before the test, perform four deep coughs to clear your throat of excessive mucus and debris. Generally, the swab tip or sponge needs to lie inside the mouth, on top, under, or at the side of the tongue for approximately two minutes. Once you've collected your oral swab, you need to place it into your collection container or lid. Do this by placing the lid firmly on a stable surface. Press the collection swab vertically down into the lid until you feel a firm click. This ensures that the sponge is compressed. As soon as you've done this, start the timer, as timing is important. Results generally should not be read before 15 minutes or after 20 to 30 minutes. Remember, always check those time limits on the instructions that come with your kit. Now that the test is complete, it's time to read the results. In the test result window, you'll see at least one colored bar if the test has been performed correctly. This is the C or control bar. 
there will be a line here if the testing solution has successfully flowed across the test paper. If there is no C bar at all, the test did not work and you'll need to repeat it with a new test. If there's only the T bar but no C bar, the test also did not work and you'll need to repeat it with a new test. If you see one bar, just the C bar, then you have a negative result. In other words, no COVID-19 has been detected in your specimen to the limit of detection. If you see two bars, the C bar and the T for test bar, then you have a positive result. In other words, COVID-19 has been detected in your specimen. Remember, even a faint line against the T region is considered positive when there's a normal C bar. At this point, if positive, you should follow the health advice for your local area. At the very least, it can be very helpful to take a photo to keep your result and possibly upload it to the relevant app or software. Remember to dispose of your test into household waste. I hope that answers all your questions about how to perform the rapid antigen test. Next, I'll answer some frequently asked questions. It's generally not recommended for use in children under two. Also, if you are prone to nosebleeds or on blood thinning agents, use the nasal swab with caution and perhaps use an oral swab variety instead. Also, if you've had facial or head injury or major facial and head surgery in the last six months, not including simple uncomplicated nasal sinus surgery, you should also possibly avoid the nasal swab. The basic principle is that the virus that is being shed from the cells that line the nose and or mouth is collected on the sponge-like swab. Parts of the virus, known as antigens, which are proteins, are then collected in the liquid solution of the test. That liquid then flows across the paper in the test device. The C band is known as the control band, making sure the test has worked, and the T band is the test band, showing you if the test is positive. These tests work best in the period when you are actively shedding the virus, and therefore most likely in the infectious phase and actually spreading it to other people. This varies between people and COVID variants, but is usually between day two or three and seven to 10 of your infection. Rats, unlike PCR tests, are less reliable at picking up the disease at either the very start or the very end of an infection. Rats are designed to be very good at picking up COVID, but they aren't a perfect test. They aren't, for example, as accurate as PCR, but easier to administer, faster to process, and cheaper. The accuracy varies with each test, but generally you will hear or read about two terms. The first is sensitivity. Rat sensitivity ranges depending on the brand between 60 to 95%. This means the rat will detect the presence of COVID in 60 to 95% of patients who actually have COVID, meaning that up to 40% of patients with COVID might have a false negative rat test. That's why the health authorities advise that if you have ongoing symptoms or risks, then you should either repeat the rat or get a more accurate PCR. A common cause for a false negative rat is if you test yourself very early, i.e. within 24 hours of catching the virus, or very late, i.e. beyond seven days of catching the virus. The other term you will hear is specificity. Rat specificity ranges, depending on the brand, between 94 and 99.6%. This means the rat will correctly diagnose people without COVID as negative in up to 99.6% of cases, meaning there is a very small chance of having a false positive rat, i.e the rat being positive when you, in truth, really don't have COVID. No. Thank you for watching this video. Please share this information with anyone you think might find it helpful. Take care and stay safe.